Hey everyone, welcome to part 15 of this Dark Urge Tactician Mode Guide for Baldur's Gate 3. We're going to go on a tour of Act 2 and we're going to eliminate a lot of the big baddies around here, most of the members of the Thorm family. But to do that, we're going to switch up our party a little bit and use some characters that we haven't really been using yet. So starting off, we're going to head over toward the campsite and we're going to go and talk to Gale. I'm going to kick him out of the team real quick and then I want to bring Will onto the team because Will has a very high charisma score, giving him an advantage in talking, and that is going to get us around having to fight a lot of the guys around here. So let's start off by choosing Will, and then we're going to go into the level up screen, and I'm gonna walk you through how we're gonna build out Will to be not only good as a communicator and get some good results in dialogue, but also how we have him set up to fight really well. So starting off, he's going to be a level 2 Warlock. We're just going to keep him right in that Warlock path for right now. And there are a lot of good spells that you can choose here, such as Charm Person, if you want to get a little bit of a bonus to the communication side of things. Also, Burning Hands is good for doing damage. Command is very useful for getting enemy to do what you want to, to drop their weapon and make them a lot easier. Hex is a very good skill for increasing our damage and giving disadvantages to the enemies. But ultimately, what I'm going to choose is going to be Hellish Rebuke. This spell lets us do a good chunk of damage to an enemy if they try to attack us, so it's a good thing to have on. Next, we're going to look at the Eldritch Invocations, and we want to choose Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast because our number one source of damage in this build is going to be using Eldritch Blast, so choosing things that buff it are definitely good. We don't need to replace any spells at this time, so we can just skip over that and move right over to level 3. We get some more health, an improved Warlock spell, as well as gain a passive, and we get a new spell. For the new spell, we're going to go with Hex, just so that we can do some more damage, and we can also disadvantage the enemy that we're fighting against. So always a good thing to have. As far as the Pact goes, we'll take Pact of the Blade so that we can summon a Pact Weapon, or bind the weapon that we're wielding, making it magical, and Pact Weapons use our Spellcasting Ability modifier instead of Strength or Dexterity. We've got some spells that we started off with, including Arms of Hadar, as well as Armor of Agathis. We don't need to remove them necessarily. I just want to show you that we had those in addition to the Hellish Rebuke that we picked up earlier. Level 4 Warlock, we get some more health and a new cantrip, as well as a new spell and a new feat. So the cantrip that we're going to pick up is going to be Minor Illusion. This just allows us to group up enemies and make them a little bit easier when we have to fight a big group. We can also take Scorching Ray as a spell. It just does a lot of damage, and we can really use that Charisma modifier to our advantage. As for the feats, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll way down toward the bottom, and we're going to choose Spell Sniper. This allows us to learn a cantrip, and the number that we need to roll to get a critical hit with spells is reduced by one, and that effect can stack. So it makes us a lot better when we're using some of those cantrips that we want to do. And Eldritch Blast is the main one that we will be using, and we're buffing it up and just making it better. We do get a new cantrip in addition, so I'm just going to go with Bone Chill, allowing us to do a little bit of damage, and also it really hurts the undead enemies around here, which is nice for us because there's a lot of them in Act 2. For Warlock level 5, we get some more health as well as Deepened Pack, so that our Pact holders can get an extra attack with our Pact weapon. This is really nice for a little bit later on as we continue to build this out. For the new spell, we're going to take Hunger of Hadar. It's just an amazing spell for a lot of crowd control, especially if we can pair that with that Minor Illusion, getting a lot of enemies to gather together and then hit them with this. It can do a lot of damage and also blind them, and they're not going to be very happy with that. With our new Eldritch Invocation, we're going to take Devil Sight so that we can see normally in darkness both magical and non-magical, and that's going to pair really well with that Hunger of Hadar that we just picked up. Well, that's going to be it for that level. Now we're moving on to level 6. We get some more health as well as Dark One's own luck. This is really amazing because we can call upon our patron to change our fate and add a 1d10 to some sort of ability roll, and it recharges every short rest. As for the new spell, let's take Fireball. It does a lot of damage to enemies in a group, so a big damage is always a good thing, right? 
And now we're going to move on to level 7, where we have a new passive as well as a new spell. For the new spell, we're going to take Dimension Door. It's really good in order to allow us to teleport us and another party member to a different location. That can be really nice to have us move somewhere where we can use our Eldritch Blast and to push someone off of a ledge or something. It gives us a lot more versatility in combat. However, Wall of Fire is also really good and if you wanted to take that instead, I wouldn't blame you. It's a good way to do some damage, especially to enemies that are more stationary. And finally, we have a new Eldritch Invocation. A lot of these just allow us to cast a spell using a Warlock spell slot, but what I'm going to take is a Beguiling Influence so that we gain a proficiency in Deception and Persuasion. And you'll see when I choose this on the bottom right side, we get new skills for Deception and Persuasion. So we're all set now and we are ready to go. Will is totally leveled up the way that we want him to be, and now we're going to move on from here. So let's switch back over to the Dark Urge, and I'm going to go talk to Shadowheart now. I'm going to skip over a lot of the dialogue of just her telling us a little bit more about herself, because that's not really necessary for anything. And now we're going to level her up after we add her to the party, because we're going to make her help Will out in battle, as well as when we go into dialogue checks. So starting off with a level 3 cleric, we get a ton of spells here. For the most part, I'm going to skip over all the prepared spells and just talk about that at the very end. So you can skip through this and then when we get to the last level, I'll tell you what spells that I took. So level 4 cleric, we get a new cantrip. I'm going to take thaumaturgy so we gain an advantage on intimidation checks. And then we can also take ability improvement as our feat and give ourselves two more points into wisdom just to help her out a little bit more. Again, we don't need to worry about the spell book right now, so let's skip that and we'll move on to the next level, which is level 5. Here we get some more health, a level 3 spell slot, and a good deal of additional spells. We don't have to make any choices at this time, so let's just quickly skip over this and keep on going. The level 6 cleric is also very basic. There's nothing that we need to choose here, so we're just going to skip past it and then move on to the level 7 cleric. Finally, for level 7, we get some more health, a level 4 spell slot, as well as some good new spells. And now I'm going to adjust the spell book, so here's what I decided to take. Revivify, just to revive ourselves, Guiding Bolt, Healing Word, Spiritual Weapon to do some additional damage, Cure Wounds, Prayer of Healing, Spirit Guardians, which is extremely powerful, Guardian of Faith, Speak with Dead, Mass Healing Word, and Death Ward. This gives us a good balance between our offensive, our defensive, and our healing abilities, which is really nice for getting into some of the tougher content a little bit later on. Well, we're all done with the camp. Now we're going to go ahead and leave, and now we're back inside the Last Light Inn. The first thing that I'm going to do is to separate Shadowheart from the rest of the group. She's going to go out by herself, and she's going to get about 480 experience incredibly easily. So we're just going to run right outside toward the southeast, going through the Shadow Wall into the ruined battlefield. When you get to the end of the path, turn toward the left and run up a little bit. You're going to see a raven on the ground. It's this glowing raven. Let's go ahead and look at it, but before we interact with it, we're going to use our spirit guardians, and we're going to choose the one that does the radiant damage instead of the necrotic damage. You can just use the level 3 version of this. There's no reason to upcast it. And then once we have that activated, we're going to then loot the raven. It will cause 12 different ravens to come screaming toward us, and we're going to immediately finish them all off. Each one of them will give us 40 experience points, and so 40 times 12 is 480 experience that we got, really for doing nothing. Now we're going to get the party back together, just choose to group everyone up. Everyone still has the pixie blessing, so that we don't have to worry about the shadow curse hurting anyone throughout this entire area. So everyone's going to come together now, and then we're just going to put Will in charge. Now you'll notice that Will does have the exclamation mark above his head. I don't want it there, so I'm just going to go and have him chat with a different party member. I'll switch it back over to the Dark Urge and then just talk to him. He wants to talk about his father, the Duke Raven Guard, but we can skip all of that because it doesn't really matter. 
Now let's continue along the path. We're going to go toward the west, kind of running back the way where we fought the Drider, whose name is Karnas, and the other group over here. This is about the area where we would have encountered the Harpers and the Ambush if we had allowed that to happen. But we're just going to keep running around here, and we're going to go all the way up the path toward the south. And then we're going to continue along as far as we can, and then we're going to go over toward the right side, and we're going to run along this path going kind of more toward the south at this point keep on running around and eventually you'll get toward the bottom of the area and then we'll be pretty close to our next destination just keep running as you go toward the west and then you're going to see another wall of shadows up ahead if you go too far to the left then you may encounter Roland you don't want to do that just yet so just stick over toward the right side as you go through this area and eventually you'll get a good chunk of experience and you're going to discover the Wraithwind Toll House now, while we still have Will, we're going to continue up through this area and we're going to go over toward the right side and then start to climb up the stairs, but don't go all the way up yet. You want to stop just by the top and you'll see a big golden enemy walking around up here. We're going to save the game and then we're going to split off Shadowheart and Will so that they will be apart from the rest of the group and then we will just gather them up so we have a small party of two. Still with Will, we're going to run over and intercept this enemy and get into a dialogue. And if it goes well, we can eliminate this one without having to fight it. What do you bring? Who are you? I require gold. Toss the creature a gold piece. I don't hand out so much gold for so little in return. You may pass the river, but first you must pay. Warlock Persuasion. Gold is such a limited desire. With the right help, you could become so much more. Here we have a skill check looking for an 18. Because we're a warlock, we get an advantage. We're also going to use Guidance from Shadowheart, but save Dark One's own luck. With all of these advantages, you should have a pretty easy time getting past this one. The gold is not for me. The gold is for the tall. I collect the tall. I collect the gold. You can really choose any of these that you want to. I'm going to say persuasion says who seems to me there's no one here to oversee you. Here we have a skill check looking for a 21. This one's pretty difficult, so I will use Dark One's own luck. You can also feel free to save it or do a quick save here. Just in case something goes wrong, you can always reload it. But you can see that thanks to Dark One's own luck, I was able to successfully pass the skill check. Gold. 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 No. I paid back. And with that, everything here succumbs to death, getting us 1,160 experience. Let's go forward, and then we're going to loot the body, and you'll see that there's some good stuff here. There's the office key, as well as some gold, and the twist of fortune. Now, there's going to be a lot of things in this area that you can loot, and so go crazy with it. None of that's really important, though, so we're just going to skip all of that, and then we're going to keep on going. So with the party back together, we're going to go back downstairs, and this time we're going to go out toward the north. So let's go down here, and then make sure that we're running in the correct direction. There's there should be a door just ahead of us here so we can open that up and then go right outside. Now we're going to go and find the next member of the Thorm family. This is Malice Thorm. So let's keep going it toward the north. We have to run all the way to the House of Healing, which is quite a distance from here. Luckily, we don't have to fight anything on the way. We can run right through the Mason's Guild here, 
We'll go through the door toward the west and then we'll run a little bit further ahead. And then when we get to the stairs, we can turn right and we're going to go through this door and then continue straight forward. You don't need to do anything in this area if you don't want to, just keep running straight ahead. If you didn't have an infernal iron to upgrade Karlak, there is another one just to the right side when you enter this door. There's a table with an infernal iron there that you can pick up. But otherwise, we're just going to head out the door and then we're going to come around here. There's going to be this path that looks like kind of roots going across in a bridge fashion. We'll run straight across here toward the northwest and then keep going up the stairs ahead of us. Now we're going basically straight west. Keep running through this graveyard area and you'll get kind of toward the end of it. And that's where you'll see the doors that lead you into the House of Healing just on the left hand side. So let's go over here and then open up these doors. They are locked, so you will need to lock pick your way through here, or I guess if you were able to, you could just break your way through it. But we do have a skill check of 10 on this. It's pretty easy just to pick the lock. So let's do that, and then we can open up the door. Once again, we're going to split our party off so that we will have Will and Shadowheart go. The reason that we separate it like that is so Will is guaranteed to get the conversation. Otherwise, the game will prioritize your main character, which isn't as beneficial. Let's save the game, and then we're going to head down, and we will get into a cutscene talking to Malice Thorm. So once that's done, we'll continue right down here. If you want to, use your short rest so that you can get the Dark One's own luck back, but you don't need to if you don't want to. So let's head down and get that cutscene over with. The objective of the Scalpel Sisters is to soothe. For the Scalpel indeed is an extension of Sha. See how the patient reacts when I but stroke the right nerve. Hear its comfort, hear the very melody of mercy. Pray, sister, show us the extent of your beneficence. Stop. Stay your hand, for it slaps where it should stroke. We can hardly hear the patient sighs of solace. Perhaps it is our unexpected audience that makes you quiver. Come, step forward. You are no sister, but that matters none. Every student is welcome. A student, yes. Do please enlighten me. Absence. Absence. No other word captures the heart of Shah so very perfectly. It is the scalpel-led journey that leads from pain to peace. A stinging truth, but a truth nonetheless. See, what is the light of eyes? but the cancer that causes one to witness the laceration of being. If light is the symptom, then darkness is the cure. For in light there is presence, but in darkness there is absence. In light is presence, in darkness, absence. You are well on your way. But one white orb disfigures you still. Let us finish the cure. Persuasion. The sisters aren't ready. They'll make me sick instead of curing me. This gives us a skill check looking for a 16. Let's go ahead and add guidance on from Shadowheart. And then we can roll it and hopefully you get it without too much issue. Their incisions are as yet still streaked with imprecision. That much I must concede. How to steady their hands, I wonder. Persuasion. They need a better subject to practice on first. Not a student, but a master. So here we have a skill check of 21, a lot more difficult. If you had that Dark One's own blessing, I would recommend using it. Otherwise, let's keep going. I see now. By example, I must edify and quell the light that blinds us. Come, 
sisters, soothe me. For that, we not only evaded that boss fight, but we also get an inspiration point called Haunted One Under the Knife for the Dark Urge, and the whole party got 640 experience. This next fight is really optional because you're not going to get really any experience or anything, but I figured if you want to know how to take out these enemies so that you can loot them, then I'll show you how to do that. So starting off, we're going to run over toward the side here. There are some enemies that patrol up top and some that will patrol down below. You really just have to wait until a time where you have the advantage to hit them with the sneak attack while hiding, and I'm going to attack the sister Anya right here to get the fight started. This fight isn't very difficult. The main problem that you might run into is if you keep your party members too closely grouped together, then they can attack in like a large cone and do a lot of damage to all of your party members and to inflict status conditions, and you don't really want that. So just try to eliminate the sisters as quickly as possible. I'll hit this one with a flurry of blows that'll take her down to just 10 health, and then you'll see that it's going to be the enemy's turn. They don't have a lot of movement, so if they're far away when they begin, that will actually buy you a couple turns. The nice thing is that all of these sisters are of the undead type so that when they get close to the blood of Lathander they will be affected by it, they'll be blinded and also they will be able to take a lot of extra damage from radiant weapons which is nice for us because we have Shadowheart who has some good radiant spells that we could use so you could attack them with things like Sacred Flame or Guiding Bolt but I think what would work best is if you just use your Spirit Guardians that will allow you to have the radiant version and anything that gets close to you is going to take a lot of damage so I'll cast that and then I just have to run around and I can do some damage to the enemies I just eliminated one of them and I did a good chunk of damage to the other one and then I can spend time healing if I have to with my extra actions um, I'm going to then frenzy with Karlak and I'll have her just start throwing items around and you know the drill here we can do a lot of damage just by tossing weapons around here and we should be able to eliminate some enemies pretty quickly just with our normal teamwork here well, that's two enemies down, two to go. I'm just going to keep everyone bundled up together here inside of the Spirit Guardians. And then with Will, I'll use Eldritch Blast. I can do some good damage with it, as well as push the enemy further away, making them less likely to be able to damage me because they can't run very far. And then I'm going to put him right inside the Spirit Guardians as well. I'm going to move the Dark Urge up and then try to do an attack from up above. You'd think that I would have a good advantage here, but unfortunately it doesn't really work that way because I get two critical misses with this even though I have a 95% chance to hit. No idea how that happened, but in shame, I will retreat and go back inside the Spirit Guardians and wait for the enemy to run up by me. Now hopefully the enemy gets close enough that you will not only blind them with the blood of Lathander, but do a little damage with Spirit Guardians. Unfortunately, you used Mind Screech, and that did some damage as well as confused Karlak. It can confuse the entire group if you get some bad saving throws, and that's not so good for us. Well, we do have Shadowheart's turn once again. We're going to move forward and just do some damage, and then we're going to run a little bit further away, and then we can do some more damage on this side. So all you have to do is kind of pivot around, and you can actually do damage just by running as long as you have Spirit Guardians up. Well, now we can go ahead and use the action from Shadowheart to do some more damage. I figured I would just use something like Firebolt and try to get some good damage. Unfortunately, I got a pretty bad roll on this one, so I only ended up doing four damage to it. But I guess that's better than completely missing. And then I can just spend a little bit of time healing from the attack that I took a moment ago. So Shadowheart is pretty handy when it comes to dealing with a lot of these undead enemies and keeping us alive and very healthy. Once again, it's Will's turn, so I can use Eldritch Blast to attack the enemies around here. I can attack this sister to push her down off this ledge here, and then she will take some extra damage from falling. And then I'm just going to finish off his turn by using Flourish against the enemy nearby. 
Now it's Karlak's turn, and you know the drill. Because we frenzied last time, we get to use Enrage Throw. So we'll just toss something over toward the sister up here. It's got 17 health, and now it's got 0 health. We'll move Karlak over toward the edge so that we can start throwing stuff down on the enemy that we knocked off with the will. And we'll just use a couple throws and that should be enough to win us the fight. Like I said earlier, this really isn't a difficult fight and we ended up with pretty much all the health that we started with. And we didn't have to go through a lot of spell slots or anything like that. So a very good fight. And now we just have to clean up this area, loot the bodies, pick up our weapons that we threw with Karlak, and then we're good to continue on. So starting off, you're going to find the uh, Karabasin's Gift. It's just something that can uh, paralyze enemies if you throw it at them or use it on them. As well as this artificial leech weapon that you can get. It does a little bit of damage, but it is a throwing weapon, so it's good just like a javelin for using with Karlak. I'm just going to skip ahead with all the looting here and then I'll show you the important thing that you want to pick up down below when you go and loot the Malice Thorm's body. Okay, let's head down the stairs and you'll find the body of Malice Thorm strapped to the chair down here. So we can go ahead and loot him. He's got a key as well as the battered loot. Make sure you pick up that loot because we can use it for a side quest to wake up Art Kulla. And then you can also get the Surgeon's Subjugation Amulet so that once per long rest when we score a critical hit we can also paralyze an enemy. That works really well with the Luck of the Far Realms a Lithid Power that basically can make it so that we guarantee that we get critical hits so a really nice combination there well after all the looting let's continue on toward the south that's ultimately the direction that we need to head we'll go up this blood-stained ramp and then we can open up the double oak doors at the top then we want to go over toward the right hand side between these red curtains and you'll see that there's another enemy up ahead we can just kind of sneak close and then we can get into a fight it's a very easy battle so it shouldn't take you too long just to get through this one at all you do get 90 experience for fighting this sister no idea why the other sisters don't award experience but this one definitely does so now we just engage in a fight using a sneak attack and we're going to use the same tactics as always just to eliminate this sister as quickly as possible and then move on. Alright, time for Karlak to finish the fight. She'll run over, and with a couple attacks with that Blood of Lathander, the enemy's gone, giving us 90 experience. We can loot the body to get a key as well as another item. It doesn't really matter though, and then we can continue on from here. This heavy chest nearby doesn't contain anything that we really need, so you can probably skip that one too. And we're just going to now keep going out the southern exit. So let's open up the big double oak doors and head outside. And now it's just kind of a straight path toward the south that we need to take so that we can get to our next destination where we have another member of the Thorm family that we want to eliminate. So let's keep going down here. We'll go down the stairs, working our way down to the waning moon. And we're going to go around around this winding staircase and then go inside the building where you can see the shadow wall. Once we're inside, we need to be a little bit careful not to go too far, so stop when you get inside. And once again, we're going to take Shadowheart and Will and separate them from the rest of the party so that they can form their own little party and Will will be our leader and he's going to run around and initiate conversation with the final Thorm over here. Make sure that you give the game a save if you want to because we do have some more dialogue checks, actually a lot of dialogue checks up ahead and you do want this to go well but you can also make quick saves in the middle of the conversation if you want to well with that done we're going to now head forward with will and we're going to get into a conversation right over here What is that you're serving? Only the best, oblivion and beyond. Go 
bone kills part of the Konax. It's bloated like a corpse and smells worse. Did the curse do this? Pick up the tankard. Leaning in, you can see how the creature's skin barely holds it together. The bulge of its belly is on the cusp of bursting wide open. He looks set to burst, and will probably be left hip deep in his juices. Go on, Flynn. Make it drink. Be drunk. Saving throw, drink with the brewer. This gives us a skill check of 14. Make sure you put on that resistance from Shadowheart. And also feel free to save it as you go throughout this because you don't want to mess it up. We've got a lot of these skill checks to go through and we don't have a lot of inspiration points to back us up. The liquid burns your throat as you swallow, but otherwise you feel no ill effects. Here we have a lot of performance checks that we can choose, but because we have Will, we also have a different option, Warlock Persuasion. I made a deal with the creature of purest sin and took its power as my own. This gives us a skill check of 16. We can add the guidance bonus onto this one, and then we can roll through this one as well. Feel free to ask him a question if you're more curious about the lore. Otherwise, you can just do a saving throw, do as he says, drink. Here's another skill check looking for a 16. We can use that resistance bonus from Shadowheart, and we do have a little bit more of a constitution bonus. So let's go ahead and roll this one too. Oh, your belly rumbles as the vile brew fills it. Yet your mind remains miraculously steady. More stories. Tell me a false fell villains vanquished. Beast bastard. Again, there's a lot of choices that you can choose from here. No special thing for being a warlock this time. So choose anyone that you want to. I'm just going to choose the first option here. We have another skill check looking for a 21. Make sure you put in that guidance bonus from Shadowheart. And then let's roll it and go. Once more. 
Ask him a question if you want to, otherwise go saving throw, seal yourself, and drink. It's got a skill check looking for an 18. We can put on that resistance bonus from Shadow Heart and then roll this one and keep going. Each swig is as painful as the last, but you remain in otherwise sound mind and body. That's another boss down without fighting, getting us an inspiration point called Haunted One, Lack of Moderation is Key, as well as 520 experience points for the rest of the party. Well, now let's get the party back together and we're going to continue on forward past these enemies. They don't really matter. If you kill them, they don't give you any experience anyway. And you want to go to Thisabald Thorm's remains right over here. He's got a key, he's got some gold, some alcohol, and other ingredients, so grab whatever that you want to. But more importantly, you want to go over to the side, and then you can examine the loose planks with the perception check, and grab Madeline's ledger inside of this. So that helps with the side quest, and you get a little experience. There's a side door over here on the west wall that you can go through and collect some other things. None of it is very important, though, so you can skip it. The enemies around here, they don't give any experience, so I am going to eliminate them just to show you how easy it is. For the sake of time though, I'll do it in two times speed just so that we get it done sooner and then we'll continue on after this. They really don't require any sort of tactics or anything, they're very easy to destroy.
There you go, all the enemies were eliminated, we didn't lose any health, and now we just have to run around and collect all of the weapons that we threw, and we can also loot the bodies around here. So we will just skip ahead until that's done, and then we'll keep going. So far we've defeated three members of the Thorm family, and we're going to go meet another one now. To do that, let's start by running south. We're going to exit to out the south side of this building, and then turn toward the left when you get out of that shadow wall. You'll continue along the path, and then you're going to turn left and go up the stairs when you get to the end of that path. Then when you go up, turn immediately around toward your right side, and then you'll keep circling around until you get to this main path. And then you want to keep heading straight south past the waypoint and you'll move forward until you can get into a cutscene with a couple guards up ahead. His power is strong here. That's far enough. His thoughts invade your own, probing for purchase. Your parasite purrs in recognition. My apologies. Welcome back, true soul. What news? I have a message from Nier. Who should I report to? You'll find Zarel in the audience chamber, true soul. She'll be wanting to hear from you. Let's hope this Zarel likes what we have to say. In her name. Praise the absolute. All right, let's keep heading straight up the stairs and we're going to enter into Moonrise Towers. Now just keep heading straight ahead, there's going to be a large set of doors in front of you. Let's go through those and then walk a little bit ahead until you get into another cutscene. I will not be slandered! General, you saw my reports. You know it's not my fault. The facts suggest otherwise. You were ordered to retrieve the artifact. You failed to do so. If I had been given drow warriors instead of goblin trash. Oi. What? You scrag. Enough. A blast of mental energy washes over you, filling the room. Your tadpole squirms, urging you to obey. <sighs> Let me make sure I understand this. You're claiming that General Thorne gave you the wrong soldiers. Yes. No! You blame the Absolutes chosen for your failure. Of course it is not the General's fault. Whose then? Let's spare Minthara so that we can recruit her in a little bit. We'll say Wisdom. Calm Zral's mind. Make her treat Minthara with mercy. We get a skill check looking for a 16. Use whatever bonuses you have here. And then we're going to keep on going. Zarel's mind is a steel trap, but you cautiously ease your way in. You just need to shift her focus a little. I'm being unkind. Anyone might have struggled with such imperfect tools. Goblins are prone to failure. Yes, it's the goblins' fault. They failed you, General, not me. General? Take Minthara below. Someone will have to consider her fate. No! Please! Mercy! Please! <laughs> bye bye, princess. And the goblins, General. You, true soul. You have seen what these creatures are capable of, and you have seen their inadequacies, isn't that so? What is your judgment? You know I'm loyal! Tell him! Enough! True soul, tell the general how the goblins served our cause. They're faithful soldiers. You should set them free. See? What I tell ya? Praise the absolute! Faith without action is anemic, sickly, in a word, useless. We are too close to the ending and the new beginning. I can coddle failure no longer. Kill them quickly. What? No! You 
creaking old bag of shit! I'm so sorry, my lord. She's an unbeliever outside my control. Dispose of the rest as you see fit. Or better yet, let us take advantage of our surprising guest and their particular creative genius. I'm sure the results will send a clear message to the troops on the importance of discipline. Of course, my lord. Thank you. You heard the general. The goblins are yours. Deal with them however you wish. Contain your excitement. Here in the seat of the Absolute's power, your authority over them is complete. They will obey any command. Report to me upstairs when you're done. Please! You gotta help me! For old time's sake! I will do this with my own hands. It always feels better. Oh, crap. You're gonna enjoy this, ain't ya? And for deciding to kill them ourselves, we get an inspiration point for the Dark Urge called Haunted One Too Easy, as well as 60 experience points. Now we just have to take out these enemies. Preferably, you can get them before they even attack you. So I'm going to start off with the Dark Urge. I can use one of my sneak attack ranges. I want to attack the enemy that is next up in line. This is Fezzerk. We can probably take him out in one good attack or two. He doesn't have that much health and his partner Racha has even less. So we can attack her and then it will do some damage. Now it's up to Will. We'll just have him go forward and he gets an Eldritch Blast and that will end the fight. All right, we're now officially in Moonrise Towers and we're free to explore, but we'll be doing that in part 16. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll be exploring the rest of Moonrise Towers and I'll be showing you some really cool stuff, including how to recruit Minthara. That's something we weren't able to do in the previous walkthrough. So again, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you soon for part 16. Until then, have a good day.